get into the first matchup, Tanner. It's going to be Aqualix taking on Favelas. Now, we haven't seen Favelas yet, but, you know, it wasn't the best stage one or stage two for them. And now they're coming into stage three. And Aqualix, it's a different story for them. I mean, Aqualix had a really standout performance in stage two, considering, you know, they won the whole thing. Uh, but in the offseason, they lost a couple of players. Namely, one of the big players of their whole roster was Gasher, who was their top rated player. He went on to TSM and now is playing for that organization. That being said, they brought in a couple of new players that have kind of helped bolster up the roster. They brought in Hat from Unemployment, who is an excellent young shooter. And they brought in none other than Penguin, uh, Keegan Smith, if you will. He's kind of a legend in the tier two scene. You know, he's won two stages of CL. He won the CL playoffs. He's qualified for invite. He won the Canadian division. And he's one of those players that you look at as an IGO. Like he can take a roster and bring them places. Now it's his responsibility to bring Aquilix, uh to the forefront today. Uh, and we're going to see whether or not he's he's ironed out some of the issues that Aquilix faced when they played mm -hmm. Ariel Rise last week. Yeah, consolation prize of Penguin for Gasher is not the worst thing to have now no. connor favelas there's uh you know i don't want to you know speak ill yet it's a brand new stage for them anything can happen but they did make some roster changes and, and hopefully these are the right steps but they were never a roster to begin with the, when you look at them on paper that should have been doing poorly yeah, it was always one of those teams that you had high hopes for and you wish they could have done so much better. They did good org backing them and a bunch of fabled players who have had good seasons here in Challenger League. But in this offseason, a couple of them went away. Quartz, he moved to Ariel Arise onto Greener Pastures. Jolton, unfortunately, my favorite punching bag in all of Challenger League, Mr. Matt, he retired, so I don't get to make fun of him anymore. But instead, we bring in Bio from his disbanded teams of the old Vipers, as well as Slothy coming in from the disbanded Nocturnes to really try to breathe new life into this team. And there is the possibility for this, barring he did not have a good stage last year. He was one of those players that we were really mm -hmm. ragging on because we know he has the capabilities to achieve greatness, but he was just going like two and 10 on entry every single game. And it was really aggravating to see almost because of the waste of potential hurt and hopefully bringing in a strong IGL like bio will bring this nice dynamic, especially against Aqualix, kind of the big brains clashing bio versus penguin. Yeah. Barring is one of those guys, man. I remember him coming in last year into CL and it was, he was a standout right away. Definitely. Like you said, Connor, a lot more to be expected from him. Now, Tanner, let's talk about the critical points for these teams. Aqualix, you know, they had a great week one. I, I would say there were, there were touch and go moments, but like, this is a roster that's taken a shakeup. I mean, they've definitely taken a shakeup. And one of the things you normally see with new rosters, they typically do well in the defensive half and they struggle on the attack half. Well, that's the complete opposite of what we saw with Aqualix. You know, usually this is a team that has performed on both ends, but when they played Ariel Rise on Clubhouse last weekend, they really struggled on the defensive half, pulling out a 2-4 split. And one of the biggest issues that I was noting when I went back and watched my VODs was that they just weren't trading anybody. They were losing these entry picks, and then they weren't being able to trade uh, any of these picks. And then kind of ties into my second point perfectly. They need to figure out a way to start winning the entry engagements. And when they're able to do so, I think they're going to have a little bit more success. You know, Keegan was a part of eight of the entry engagements in that uh, bout versus Ariel Rise, losing four and winning four. So if he's going to be that dominant pressure player that's going to be able to put the, the, the pressure on their opponents, he's going to need to find a way to win a little bit more than calling directly mm -hmm. even, especially if the team isn't trading all that success. Mm -hmm. Now, Connor, I, did, I do know that you talked about Bio there in the roster showcase. But going into the critical points, is he also a focus there for this team to to kind of improve? That's why he was brought in, right? He has success, especially in CL. What are your thoughts? Well, Bio, he did well enough on Vipers. You know, the West Garfield Park team that went under the org. It was kind of always a team that we were ragging on a little bit and we're thinking, you know, we might sleep on them just a little bit. Then they'd come out and upset teams over and over and over again and always played close games. But now with Bio onto a different team onto favelas has a little bit more experience and as we finally i think are getting my critical points up mm -hmm. one of the biggest things that they're gonna have to go for is tightening up their roam game trying mm -hmm. to get the opening pick on the defensive side because like you were mentioning tanner a lot of those mm -hmm. attacking engagements for aqualix really do set the tone for the round aqualix they have a 79 percent conversion rate across their attacks which means they get that first pick they win most of their rounds however 
with favelas as well on their defensive side, their conversion rate's almost 90%. It's in the high 80s, but they don't get the opening pick that often on their defensive side. So if they really focus in on that, that's where they're going to start finding success and they can really stop the pressure of Aqualix. And now if we switch over to the attacking side, you have two big departures coming out from the side of favelas. Goodbye, Jolton. Goodbye, Quartz. And those were the spearheads on the attack. Really making up and comprising over half of the attacking entry engagements yeah. for their team. A lot of that pressure is going to fall on Slothy because barring, he's just not that guy. He's a lurker. He doesn't take the head on gunfights. Okay, the important thing at this point, Tanner, is going to be the map veto. I, I know sometimes you, you try to deflect and you don't like doing it, but I'm going to make you do it this time, okay? Why, why, why if I, I, if I send it, it to you, you got to do it. <laughs> I mean, both of these teams, I mean, it's really early in the stage. So a big thing I want to take in mind here is we haven't seen Favela do any map bans throughout the stage. Um, they didn't play play day one, so and they brought in two new players, including a new IGL. So this could be very dramatic in which way it goes in, in terms of what the previous history was. I'm kind of expecting something along the lines of maybe a theme park or a skyscraper. That's something that both of these teams like to play. In fact, last time these two teams met, they met on skyscraper itself, and it was a 7-4 victory for Oculix. Now, we didn't get to see that on stream. That was an off-stream game. But that's something that both of these teams kind of match up towards. And as we go through the bands here, you can see maps like Theme Park kind of going away. You got a couple of the equalizers with Oregon and Border also going away. It kind of leads me to conclude that we're probably going to be seeing oh, no, Clubhouse is out. It's probably going to be a skyscraper, which is something that I'm really looking forward to. Uh, what do we got left here? Yeah, Villa and Skyscraper. So it was very smart band coming up from uh, Aqualix on Villa. That's always historically one of Bio's best maps. Um, Aqualix banning Villa is also a map that they've really struggled on. So we're going to get a rematch. We're going to get to go back to Skyscraper. Um, like I said, this is this is a do-over from last stage. I'm actually, and we don't get to actually see a lot of Skyscraper in Challenger. So this is going to be a very fun game to watch. Do you think, Connor, that it, maybe the thinking in Favela's mind is going back here is maybe the right choice with the changes they've made? Because otherwise, I would have to think, did they just let the ban get away from them? You've gone here, and it didn't go very well. Um... With a map such as Skyscraper, it's still relatively new, and there's not a whole lot of odds or a lot of precedent set from the T1 level for, you know, the trickle-down economics of strats to come mm -hmm. through and really show the T2 teams how to play. So when you have a capable IGL that you've brought in like Bio, it can really revitalize some of these newer maps, especially on, like I was mentioning, Skyscraper. It's a very loose and fluid map. You know, there's a lot of shot calling and direct takes that we're going to see, you know, kind of the switch things on ahead. Mm -hmm. And last time from watching that off stream game, the biggest thing for Game of Gladiators at the time in that game was that they were able to take site correctly, but Aqualix on their defenses played a phenomenal retake game which, you know, maybe without Gasher might not be the case for Aqualix. Mm -hmm. Now, I have a little bit of a prediction here, Tanner, and the prediction is that we're all going with Aqualix on this one. How certain are you that this is going to be an Aqualix victory, Tanner? I am pr fairly certain. I mean, <laughs> Keegan is a player who is, as, as a former coach, someone who used to compete against him, he was one of the few people I had a lot of respect for when it came to the strat development side. And he's a person on Parabellum. They used to be very strong on Skyscraper. So mm -hmm. this is a map he understands very well. He's got a lot of really good shooters in the side of Hat and Afer and Psychosis. These guys can put up monster numbers. And until favelas really show that they're a team worth paying attention to, it's not really fair to give them any credit because they didn't really earn any credit in Stage 2. So for those reasons, I'm going to go with Aquilix. There's no way I'm at 25%. Come on, production. They're just doing me dirty. There's no way I'm there. But that being said, um, Aqualix should be the team that's going to pull ahead today. Uh, and if if it doesn't happen, it's going to be a clear upset, as you can see here with the predictions. What would it mean, Connor, if we do get that upset today? Would it just be a one-off game, or do you think this would have implications farther along the line? Um, if there was to be an upset for the favelas, I would say maybe it's not Saturday. Maybe it's actually a Friday and we can call it a freaky kind of day. It's a freaky <laughs> Friday. Somehow the roles are getting reversed and I don't know what the heck is going on, but Aqualix, I think they've got this through and through just on paper in practice. This is a team that's two and zero against this roster, seven, four victories, both times stage one and stage two that has continually gotten better. And hopefully Aqualix aren't going to take a step back. Well, it's the David and Goliath on the scoreboard, at least. It's Favela's Aqualix going to Skyscrapers, round number two.
Hello, everyone. Welcome back. I, of course, am Crow. I'm Harrison. Sitting next to me is John. And John, I'm very excited because last play day, I missed out on Aqualix. That was you and Carter. But now I get to cast my very good friend Keegan again. I really liked what I saw from play day one. Of course, there's stuff that needed to be fixed. So we'll see what they've done with this past week. Yeah, I think in general, just having a slow reaction time is what really failed them. That and the trades to deny a lot of those rush slash very heavy orientated pushes that were happening by their opponents back all the way in clubhouse. So if they're a bit more reactionary against favelas, I could imagine they have a lot of ease when going here onto Skyscraper. And funny enough, I think this might be the first time I've casted Skyscraper inside of Challenge League. So I'm hoping for a really Let's special go. treat today. Yeah, Skyscraper, always fun. Really, no matter who's playing it, I remember uh, there was a really big skyscraper game. Uh, remember stage one when Aqualix almost got relegated? I do they remember that, played against that, yeah. Outlast on Skyscraper, and that was a freaking barn burner. And already the band's coming in. Very interesting. Favela taking uh, Nook away. There's been a lot of discussion about Nook possibly being the new Thatcher, with there only being three sets of nades now, with how Nook has really found her place in the meta as a lurker, and of course with the current meta, very aggressive. Nook going to be hitting the back after she uses those nades. With how gunfight heavy this meta is, you really don't want to be getting caught off guard. And the Monty from Aqualix. Who on Favelas would play that? I'm not 100% sure who would bring that, but for gaming, that is a op that they crutched heavily on to manage to get side control and get that defuser down. So I guess since that was always such a problem for them last time they played on skyscraper they'd rather just not deal with it and have it more as a safety ban not a horrible idea for awkward but yeah i am definitely uh, wondering the exact same question you were able to relay out but starting out round number one here favelas opting to go in the T and karaoke room with their lineup suggesting that they're gonna at least do a little bit of an extension potentially leading in through both drum and potentially dragon slash shrine room just to Try to waste even more time and resources and to potentially make that geisha clear a little bit more challenging as well as you normally want to have this position of the map in your back pocket as an attacker before you end up committing to that geisha rotation yeah it's kind of like we saw from um Ten seconds left. remember the theme park upstairs sites right a lot of times teams used to uh if you're defending bunk and daycare you extend into office initiation if you're defending office initiation a lot of times you would extend back into daycare and bunker if you knew the team was going to come from that direction very similar idea on skyscraper right if you're defending over in t and karaoke many times these teams are going to extend outwards towards the center of the map because dragon can really become a, a a really bunkerable position. There's only one reinforcement that you have to worry about and one window at your back. If you have people extended over towards office, you're protected from there as well. Uh, fighting around the dragon as an attacker also really sucks. So it's a very defensible position. And that's why Slothy is all the way over here, already tucked behind the bar, barring inside the museum as well. Aqualix are looking to force back these roamers and clear the whole map. First minute just about over and done what seems like Vela's just shortly getting ready to fall back just a tad barring is still holding up above inside a top house stairs maybe trying to work some sort of early engagement at least break a couple of extra drones he goes for the run out in fact and almost finishes off beastly but thankfully the 556 five, dealing a bit more damage there against the Azami, the first entry favoring Aquilix, and now they can safely begin to work their way in from the office side of the map, a little bit closer towards where the rest of the defenders are currently stacked up at, but still a very important life to still be saved, having Beastly alive, and still having a little bit more utility to bring out the rest of this round. Yeah, Bex Dog letting, the, letting us show that his gun still remains hot. Like you said, very important pick to leave up and a very important pick to get as the attack. That's a zombie. Within the first minute and a half, she definitely still had Kiba barriers in her pocket that have now died with her. Now, of course, you didn't get nothing if you're the favelas. You have damage off of hat, which I think was, um, I think they said it was team damage. And you have a lot of HP off of Beastly. And now Penguin dying in Geisha as he takes a solo peek against Slothy. A good one for one to even the man count back. Favela is now in a much more favorable position, but it looks like they've got info on this roamer downstairs. In comes the nade, but Rudy has already backed off and he'll continue playing for the C4 below. Still wasting plenty of time though. Aqualix still wanting to commit to deal with this mute, but finally Rudy begins to work his way back up above. 
Aqualix probably not having info on that. They might have to just give up that one campaign on the first floor as they just don't have a lot of time left to fully execute into this bomb site. But thankfully, at least they get the man advantage back in their favor before they eventually try to hit the bomb site. I also didn't realize Rudy has actually used his C4, so really no point for him to be down there anymore. Might as well bolster the site defenses and avoid that roam clear. That was a great pick in this site by the by Hat. Really opens up the opportunities for the attack as they start to just looks like just walk on in still a couple men below protecting from a possible c4 underneath rudy just straight up peeks underneath but beastly can't get the refrag bio follows it up psychosis goes down to the shotgun and beastly's alone he's outside he's got to climb his way in sloppy shuts him down and the sight presence from the defense wins them the round Fantastic callback by Rudy as well. Being able to still control the top of Black Stairs is a really important part of the map, especially when you're trying to execute in through T Room from that top area close towards Shrine, leading next to the Catwalk as well. You can just deny a lot of pressure that Aqualux can begin to build up on you, and by Rudy finding not only that one kill on someone from outside of the Black Balcony, but also eliminating the person that was trying to shoot him from downstairs, it denied a lot of options for Aqualux to try to enter in the site in a pretty meaningful way. Good first round for Velas, and now they opt to try and defend the second top floor bomb site of Office and Exhibition with, I'd say a pretty similar lineup, except they might be trying to keep some of these power positions alive for a little bit longer because now they have Rudy on the line, which can allow for a little bit more utility to be spent out by Aqua when they're going in for these extensive players. Yeah, maybe trying to force presence in a, I mean, maybe in Terrace or maybe in drum itself as you can see again very long extension all the way across the map when defending these top floors you want to make sure you have as much control as possible you want the attack to work for every inch of this map and fellows of course uh setting up as such once again two hard breachers coming out from aqualix afer on the thatcher so it's not that the bandit is going to be useless, but Arrow will have to be actively tricking if he wants to deny any of that hard breach. They do spot the Azami downstairs, and Barn will retreat back up, probably not wanting to give his life away as early as he did in the previous round. So far, Froflux seems like they are at least wanting to get some of these main walls opened up first. Having that Thatcher available is going to pretty much allow this back wall to be opened up with relative ease since Arrow is nowhere near that position. Least one extra opening now for Aquax, and they can probably begin to work their way either through clearing out the back mini bar and maybe also getting that single wall near the house stairs opened up as well, forcing favelas even further away from some power spots near the bomb site, forcing to be a little more elaborate on these plays. But like you mentioned, with barring still being alive and well, it can set up a couple extra key barriers and just weaken some of these sight lines Aquax is currently brewing up. And despite the wall being open, it's not uh, an avenue. Only one uh, charges of the of the Selma actually went off. I think Arrow is still able to put a battery down. That's what I'm thinking. Yeah, because there's no way that explosion would have not gotten the battery. So maybe in trying to deny that bandit trick, uh, he just was able to nab a little corner. But it is still an opening. It's still something the defense is going to have to be careful of. Psychosis gets the leadoff kill. Slothy refrags. We go one for one. About halfway now eclipse. And Slothy is able to get away. Still needing to worry about barring, though. He's just playing at the top of drum as of right now. Still a little bit of information as well as those default cams, but someone's still able to cross past him. Penguin as well, playing on the back balcony, able to shut down that Azami, and now you can begin to see Aqualux close in on this position. Still having that one-man advantage. It's basically just the sight presence of Arrow and Slothy left to stand, and they're not really in the best predicament to do so. Arrow very exposed to somewhere to rotate back towards that office balcony, and Slothy kind of trapped, essentially, on the house stairs, a drone giving away his position as well. He He's got to get aggressive. He's got to win this first gunfight. As if not, it would just be a 1vx. And thankfully, he's able to evade that first engagement towards Shrine. But still, a very tough spot for Favelas as a whole. The wall right next to him falling away, giving him even less cover, even more angles to worry about. And there it is, Penguin showing just how dangerous Terrace is when ignored by the defense. Three kills from that position. A for walking in, closes the round out for Aqualix. And now, what we saw in round number one, completely turned around in number two. Great trade game from Aqualix. 
yeah, just letting their gadgets do all the work, having so many open angles in the final 40 seconds, pretty much just forcing favelas in very uncomfortable positions. We saw all those angles looking down from Shrine Town towards Dragon into the bomb site, and we even saw that rotation as well leading into Terrace. Again, just forcing little to no options for favelas except to maybe get aggressive, work some sort of gunfight, and then try to rotate a little bit deeper in towards site. But again, that's still not a very favorable position for favelas as a whole and although that attack went incredibly well for aqua it seems like favelas want to try to opt to go to the exact same yeah, bomb site once again bomb. except bringing a little more shields into play having both bio on the smoke and thorn or barring on the thorn pardon and potentially having more info in the round as well as they do have those black eye cameras and of course those thorn razor blooms which are also put in the right positions can gather some good information as well and I think something that really hurt them again, like I said, was uh, not being very cognizant of Terrace. That Terrace window, Penguin just sits on it like a turret. And you can see he found a kill in Drum, he found a kill in Terrace, jumped in, opened the wall, and was able to find uh, the player in, well, not in the bomb site, but, you know, in bar right next to bomb site. Uh, or no, he was in museum. That is technically the bomb site. I was right. So hopefully. The favelas going back to this, uh, going back to this site now, are thinking to themselves, "Okay, hey, we we cannot ignore that window. We have to have eyes on it. We can't give up a free triple kill to penguin again." Really love having that drone there, making sure that they're not going to have to worry about any kind of bandit trick. So not going to have to waste all too much hard breach in the first round and having more EMPs later in the fight. Mostly just secondary EMPs, though, that being on for A first. So trying to deal with this bandit could be a problem for the main breach unless they get somebody underneath, perhaps, or just have Hat in a good position to utilize those Zofia concussive blasts as you're not able to bandit trick as you just get your batteries put back down into your back pocket, essentially. So Aqualix still trying to set up to deal with that presence in the bomb site itself and psychosis now playing underneath as well maybe could utilize some nades with some proper information maybe with those dogby calls or in general just the good old-fashioned drones too speaking of drones it didn't seem like there were any in front of him there was someone right there that he just passed by both players evading each other i also like the difference between of course you know this round and last is that hard breach over on the single panel wall by vip having that be a completely open wall could completely change the dynamic of this attack but that's not great the bandit trick landing on beastly's thermite charge he's now out of utility the wall i think now opened by the ace so at least it's something but no it was actually it was on, it was on a different wall so uh, office is completely closed that is not ideal you still have one secondary EMP, and with Arrow having no more batteries in his pocket, you can't actively trick that wall unless you pick up one of those two batteries. So really would just be a matter of when Penguin wants to rotate. Oh, or he's if out. Oculus, yeah, he's not in a good spot to get the wall opened up. Oh, he's out of Selma's on top of that yeah. too. That wall is going to be completely shut out for the rest of this round, but thankfully Oculus's guns are still hot as ever. A five versus three as they charge at the top of house. Now trying to work on that extension as well. Penguin gets rid of Slothy, leaving just Rudy and Barring. Now to retake in a four versus one rudy may find one clean shot but still it's barring soon to be in a post plant position the world against him their own shields against them as well and a crossfire there to greet him as well penguin gets the final kill aquilix takes their second round incredibly well played i mean not only the initial push into the site but then holding those crosses denying any chance of a retake from those defenders off site and like i said opening that big vip wall completely changing the dynamic of that attack you can see they were not interested in those roamers sure there was a tentative initial clear underneath from psychosis but neither of those players met each other psychosis just carved his way defenders through the bottom floor bomb. ensuring that at the very Five least attackers. there was no one underneath the site to disrupt the play that Aquilix was going for. The roamer underneath earlier from Favelas was, of course, to stop that Geisha clear, which never came. Aquilix open up that VIP wall, they get all the angles established again, and this time, instead of full clearing the map, they take the fight to the anchors, destroy the on-site presence, and of course, like I said, those crossfires at the end, completely destroying those off-site players. Very well done from Aquilix, really showing that they can adapt to whatever the Favelas throw at them. And as well, Penguin being a much more important player so far in this matchup in particular, not being too open to those entry engagements, now playing more for a mid-round presence, again, having those cutoff angles so when they do want to clear out the roamers, they can make sure they're not going to be getting away for free or at least getting away with their lives still intact. And also being on that ace to, again, open up more sight lines for the rest of their team to really put in the extra hurt 
on these rounds. They're going to have to go back to T and Karaoke, or at least in terms of attacking it, as Favela's opt to go here for round number four. And overall, the clear wasn't too bad by Aqualix, but in general, just not able to fully execute as they still needed to worry about that top black stairs presence potentially speeding up that execute process could be a really decisive factor to them being a bit more successful on this clear and it seems like that might be their change of pace wanting to opt to clear out this first floor in the beginning of the round dealing with that roaming presence so well as rudy is already shut down and now they can begin to focus almost all of their pressure up above but i believe there is still one more defender prowling about in the middle of main you are correct. There is still someone downstairs. It's barring on the Azami, and Bio has now joined the downstairs presence. Afer, though, knocks out one. Now there's only one left, and it seems like Aqualix don't really care, and I mean, why should they? Bio being off-site means there's only two on site. He doesn't have a C4. The only thing he's going to be able to do is flank, but I don't doubt that there's drones on those positions. Bio now on the hunt, but Penguin blindsides him, and all the off-site players again dusted. Without a second thought, not even a point of HP being removed from these attackers. Slothy now flushed off. The shield has to rotate back to sight. Arrow and Geisha will try for a run out, but there's no one for him to find. Gets caught on the on the retreat back, and Slothy's alone. 1v5 on sight. Takes the head of Hat. Takes the head of Psycho. A third Oof. now onto Afer. Beastly and Penguin, the last two alive. The two supports left to clutch up the round. And he, Penguin <gasps> goes down to the pistol. Slothy, a tremendous clutch attempt being put together right in front of our eyes. It's a 1v1 against Beastly, no! but he looks the wrong way. 50-50 decision, and he chooses wrong. And Aqualix able to recover. A great try for Slothy, but with Aqualix having so much breathing room, it was a lot to ask, all for one player, but again, such a good try. And a lot of clean shots landed as well, able to isolate so many of those attackers. <laughs> even, but Even Penguin is giving him props. I mean, you really can't fault the guy. He just landed like four amazing kills and was quite literally, like you mentioned, a 50-50 chance away from winning the round as a whole. But Aqualix, they were really giving it their all, especially in the early round. Their adaptability to realize that it was a major mistake that they were still focusing two or more players on that first floor when they only had 50 seconds left. Instead of saving that for the late round, giving Favelas more time to play in those rat angles, they deal with that from the get-go. Favelas feel a bit pressured to want to try to hold that first floor down still. They try to play for refrags, and it just gives Aqualix more and more time to build up that prowess, find even more one-for-one -one gunfights that go their way, and that leaves just a two-versus-five position where Slothy is now put in that spot where he has to be the hero of the day to still win that round for his team and he just was not able to get that final kill to grant it as a victory and now it seems like we're not going to have a top four site in play it'll be barbecue and kitchen but to an extent you still play as if you're defending tea and karaoke as you normally want to extend quite heavily in the same spots that you would if you were defending that top four bomb site yeah right every good downstairs defense starts with a good upstairs hold and mm -hmm. Again, to the same vein of like you're holding T and karaoke, you even have an extension to the other side of the map in office. So Skyscraper, because the map is generally a little bit smaller, you can kind of play most of these downstairs sites like you would an upstairs site. Of course, just with a uh, more of a fallback plan in mind. And with the aggressive roam coming out from the favelas, not really adapting to what Aqualix wow. is doing, but still trying anyway. At least in this round, it works out for the opening pick. And remember, to Connor's point on the analyst desk, back when they were gaming Gladiators, they had an 80 to 90% conversion rate when they get the opening pick on the defense. The problem is, in these first four rounds, or in these first five rounds, this is the first time they're getting that opener. Pretty good one of that as well, since, again, Aqualix still have so much of the map to clear, and they're going to lose out on one of their main pieces of the puzzle, that being Hat, so early. But still, they don't seem all too phased about it, still making some quick rotates now, beginning to enter in through both Paris and Dragon Room, with the rest of Avelas now just stacking up to play off each other's contact, and again, just trying to waste more time and resources. As long as they're able to play for one-for-one -for -one trades, they should be completely fine, because, again, they still have that man advantage, but eventually they begin to slowly fall back, just a bit more, but they still have tons of utility, so it's not that big of a concern for them as of right now, as it's still going to take a lot of time for Aqualix to clear out that top floor despite falling back just a tad. Uh-oh. What's going on here? Do they know about the shield? Because if Penguin just rushes on in, he's definitely going to die. 
They're getting ready for it. Oh, they're timing it with the breach. In comes the sledge. Penguin's gonna rush in and completely avoid the shield. Now they know about it. Bio is completely caught off guard. Penguin now ascending the staircase, looking for these roamers. He knows about the hole in Geisha. He'll go towards the hallway, but the R4C, it's better now, but still not great at range. Slothy dusts him, and there goes that rush attack. At least he still have Psychosis up above. Beastly with a long angle snipes down Arrow. Almost a second kill for him, but having his back turn against the player inside of Geisha now forces him just a bit farther back. A three versus three, and technically Psych what? Control Afer. I think he just hit that through the ceiling. Down goes Barring. You could maybe try to plant if Beastly gets in a good position to hop into the bomb site, but currently it's just Afer single handedly holding down the kitchen room. He Here comes the flank by Slothy. They have no idea about this. Oh, down to such little HP, but he still finished off the sledge two versus two with such little time left to now reclaim the site and upstairs rudy retakes shotguns down psycho beastly loses the one and the favelas take round number five thanks to slothy shutting down the rush roam clear from penguin converting that to the site clear making sure afer wasn't going to be able to do anything with the presence it seemed like aqualix maybe didn't have a thorough enough drone network set up to stop that from happening and it was a really good attempt. I, I got to give credit to Aqualix. They saw that it was taking a lot to just clear out the top floor the usual way. They tried to be a bit more creative, getting that early opening in through delivery, Defender, shutting down bio, your main you know, stall potential when you eventually try to execute the site. But when they tried converting back up above, it was still pretty much even trades for Velas across the board. And eventually Beastly had to take a very long rotate back down into site if he wanted to get that defuse down. And with Afer still basically on an island, it was only a matter of time for Velas end up trading him out. And really just the last two one-for-ones just were heavily favoring for Velas' Aqualix once again. They had to make that first move on those last two engagements. They had to deal with someone in a power spot up above, and they had to get rid of, you know, Slothy, who was just sitting behind natural cover with the case essentially just next to his feet. A really good recovery attempt by Favelas, but they are still down by one round. And best case scenario, they would need to win this one as well. They've got to give it their all in this last karaoke bomb. Harrison. Yeah, I'm not going to lie, I was really worried when he missed those initial shots on Afer. Yeah, because yeah, right, Afer's a good enough player to win those. Afer will win those. Yeah, Afer's a good enough player to win those. So my, my heart jumped a little bit. Slothy able to grab the kill. He has been the standout player for his team right now. I mean, look. The favelas are one round down from Aqualix, and two players are on donuts. And those two players are freaking Arrow and Barring. So Slothy is doing a lot of the heavy lifting right now. He's 10 and 3. And in comes the Thermite charge. It'll open the VIP single. And John, Keegan Penguin Smith is on Blitz. But do favelas know? Right outside the door. There's a Gon 6 out. Oh god, this is not going to be good for Favelas if they take a long time to react to this. Oh, and Hat as well, laying out on the karaoke repel. No one's gonna be able to safely retake. Here comes the rush. Keegan already on half HP from his own teammate's bullet, but he's got sight control. He just continues to charge in, creating so much space for his team. The alibi oh! now blind. She can't win the gunfight. No chance in hell. Psychosis shuts down Bio. Total sight control for Aqualix. It's a five versus two. Oh! Arrow, a beautiful prone peak, but someone can most likely pick up that diffuser. Arrow has to charge in. Oh! Me the same bit of his teammate, but Keegan's so low, he gets downed while Arrow is blind. The pistol can confirm that kill and now it's a 2v2 with Aqualix once again having to retake the site. Arrow just single-handedly may have won this round for the favelas killing Afer getting that diffuse planter I don't even know where where, where was he planting right next to the wall so yeah, Arrow angle able to thread wave. the needle I think through smoke as well and killing the blitz attempting to refrag by shooting him in the feet again sure blitz is a powerful operator in 1v1 engagements but if he's low HP like that very susceptible to the toe shots now Beasley and Hat are left to pick up the pieces Barring and Arrow have found their first kills in this round they've had a very slow start to the game and that's what Aqualix need to ride their hopes on. Beastly's 4-2, and two, Hat 3-4. and four. He's had some really important entries so far. We'll take some pot shots at Arrow, but the Jaeger dives out of the way. Diffuser still dropped, lost in sight, under the watchful eye of that Jaeger. Barring, covering the other side of the map. Arrow just steps into the line of sight from Hat. He could be a dead man, but Aqualix are just wasting time as the Favelas bide their time. Another drone now destroyed. One more piece of info that the that Aqualix will not have, but they do confirm Arrow's position by that Geisha split. Beastly has worked his way now into the objective. Not recovered case yet, though. 
Barring now covering towards top black stairs, misses some shots. There's only 15 seconds left, and he swings on Hat. Beastly with one refrag, he needs to grab the other. He sees Arrow, but doesn't peek the right angle. And Arrow and Barring, two players on zero kills that I, that I had just highlighted as being dead weight, end up getting all five kills in the round and clutching it out for their team. And a major part of that too was not only, you know, Penguin being low, so Air was able to manage to shut down the Blitz while he was fully blind, but also the plant spot as well. Not having that post-plant position confirmed for Oculus left a lot of major openings for Favela to just play back and force Oculus to then get back into the site when they still had to recover that diffuser. If we had probably seen the defuse go down a little bit closer to the default spot and not the exact opposite spot of the room itself of Karaoke, that might have been around still winnable for Oculus as a whole. But again, still great retake by Favela. Still, uh, again, playing that consistent trade game and eventually removing the spearhead of Penguin. That blitz, which again created so much space, became pretty much null and void once you had Arrow stepping back up towards Geisha Room. Things completely even moving in the second half. And Oculus, funny enough, opting to start on Barbecue and Kitchen, a site we've only seen once, but it has had a 100% win rate so far in this stage if you really want to get that deep into stats. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. 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 We, could, we could go there. There. Maybe that's the ideology of my it's Oculus one, here. One for one, one hundred percent win rate. The best site in it's Challenge League. Site. It's been confirmed. Barbecue there it Kitchen is, is him. <laughs> <laughs> Let's hope Oculus don't prove us wrong here. Yeah. Uh, just because we did that bit, they will. Yeah, that's normally how it works. Vela's as well, taking a similar philosophy to Oculus, rocking the Thatcher, Sledge, and two Hard Breachers, only having uh, an Ash as their entry rather than uh, the Iana or Zoe that we saw from Oculus. Oculus also running a very utility-heavy setup. Two, C two shields, I almost said two C4s, actually no C4s, two shields, two BPs, Aruni and Jaeger, and Castle. So they're putting a lot in front of Favela's, banking on the, maybe the fact that Favela's you have said themselves they i don't know if they're not scrimming at all or that they just haven't been scrimming a lot maybe banking on the fact that the favela's teamwork in the in their utility clear maybe not as strong as other teams i was thinking about that as well when we were just going through the map and phase as well clearly the favela's still more than comfortable of having this map of skyscrapers slip through so it shouldn't be all that horrible but yeah just the small minute things like timing on specific attacks that could end up Coming really big issues for them later in the round but so far nothing too out of the ordinary by favelas they haven't been getting all too aggressive but they're still clearing out these common spots here for this extension oh! wow beautiful shot by rudy he saw psychosis opening up that that vertical angle and was able to immediately snipe him from that position opening kill goes the way of favelas and it looks like they're just about ready to maybe hit the site in the next couple of moments here harrison yeah, i mean you gotta you gotta make those holes earlier Another peak comes out, Penguin misses some shots, and although, you know, Aqualix and Favelas have traded rounds back and forth, every round that the Favelas have gotten that opening pick, they've won so far. More trades go out, but it's in the favor of the Favelas. Now a one versus four in the favor of Favelas, as Aper's left upstairs all alone, fighting against the window player, but there's someone up there with him as well. Taking so much damage, just one HP, trades with Arrow, and the Favelas take the lead on Skyscraper four to three and with that attack altogether for the favelas they didn't overcomplicate it at all it was the exact opposite they kept it very simplistic they only brought the amount of heart breach that they would need just to get a couple of angles opened up in geisha that way no one could play on the hatch all too well or even fall back on the hatch period that's why we saw aqualix last second trying to make some different vertical holes so they could play a little bit farther back and not have to give up the top floor completely but still because it wasn't done you know premeditated it wasn't done during the prep phase favelas were able to catch aqualix with their pants down and the rest of their offense were still trying to clear out through delivery while having someone on that back kitchen window as well they had pretty much every angle unlocked and it was a good attempt i believe it was had to try to retake a little bit near that sushi bar on the jaeger but he was still yeah. only going one for one and again with Favelas having such a strong man advantage from that good entry and just overall pretty straightforward attack it wasn't enough to seal the deal favela's already looking quite strong on their second half harrison yeah and they again the the, the entry picks right They've traded rounds back and forth in which Aqualix does get the entry pick, but the two rounds that Favelas get that opener, they've won so far. 
So they're definitely looking to keep that ball rolling, especially answering Aqualix's three in a row with three in a row of their own. They're only, only having a lead because they were able to take away round number one. Plus, Aqualix had so much utility dedicated upstairs, I think that was probably what the favela's game plan was, right? Just take mm -hmm. him through pantry, ignore all that upstairs utility, and but it becomes kind of wasted. So, but now we're in T, right? And now, now the favelas are going to be kind of forced to play into that utility no matter what. At least they have the Thatcher to once again get these walls opened up with pretty much no strings attached. Again, trying to weaken any of that presence over near Geisha, which overall is going to make that extension a little more challenging to defend for Ooh. the side of Aqualix. A grenade, which quite literally grazes Afer, is only able to bring him down to just under 50% of his HP. The second nade bounces a little bit off of the floor, but it wouldn't have even landed anywhere close towards Afer to kill him, so he will still persist inside of Geisha, but he's pretty much playing here to die unless he's given room to fall back. But so far, doesn't really seem to be the case as somewhere just swing him over near Geisha. There's a really good chance he'd end up dying. I do like that angle that he's got, that off angle up over the luggage cases and through the window. He's also got Penguin to support, chilling on the staircase with an angle on a window of his own. But look at this, barring is up black stairs already. Beastly takes some shots towards him and gets downed in response. Through the wall, smoke is on the floor. Oculus are going to have to dedicate someone to pick him up. Is that the opening the favelas are looking for? The potentially. Not so. Beasley gets picked up. Not a whole lot of movement, but it is HP off of a very important player. And as Penguin dies, maybe this is the battle call. Could potentially be that. At least Beasley's still alive to bring out some of those toxic babies. But again, 20 HP, one shot is probably going to put him in the dirt and not the team I'm referring to, Favelas. Once again, looking to fully collapse on this black attack for the most part. Case does need to be recovered, but I believe it is outside, so it's not that big of a concern here for Favelas as a whole. And it seems like for Aqualix, they've got a rough idea as to how exactly Favelas want to go into this egg cube, but that C4 just missing on the karaoke or Pell player, that could be a really big issue to look forward to in these next 40 seconds. Hat has replaced Penguin on those main stairs, though, so there's no freebie opening for the favelas here, at least not until he ascends them again and dies to Biologic. Five versus three in the favor of favelas. The HP clearly in their favor as well, with Beastly and A for both under half. Psychosis is going to have to do a lot of his heavy lifting, but Beastly... He's still got a gun, doesn't matter how much HP he's got. He lands one, Psychosis another as Afer gets refragged. Three versus two, a better position for Aqualix. No longer impossible to win, especially as Psychosis lands another. Two versus two, five seconds left, and the case is dropped. No one on Favelas has it. Bio finally picks it up. They catch Beastly rotating in. The plant is being completed. Psychosis, you've got to go. He doesn't see him through the footholes. Plant complete. Post plant positions now being taken up, and Bio kills him through the footholes. Psychosis, unable to see the planter thanks to that couch, wins the round for Favelas. And I warned exactly of this, Harrison, still having Bio alive on that karaoke repel. He finds the kill still on that repel position. And then when things get really dire, he ends up hopping into the site, finds another frag, and is able to pick up the diffuser, although it's basically isolated inside of karaoke, and he confirms the plant while getting the last frag as well. Incredibly well done by Favelas in that three versus three, still converting it out as a win. And now a timeout being called as well by Aquix, as they should have won that round theoretically. If they were able to deny of Bio of entering back into the building, that could have been a win. Or better yet, if they had just killed him on that repel with Afer landing that C4, could have been a completely different round. And now Aquix feeling stressed out as they are one round away from potentially looking down the gun barrel of OT. They need to change up how they're playing on these defensive rounds. Especially after losing out on the two points last week. They're definitely hungry for the full three. Aqualix also being one of our front front runners, right? The I think mm -hmm. uh, we all pretty much agreed the two front runners heading into this stage were going to be Aqualix and Reality TV. So Aqualix do not want to be giving, or well, the three front runners, you know, them and one shot. Yeah. So Aqualix <laughs> do not want to give more ground than they already have to those other two teams. But like you said, staring down the barrel of overtime with only one point to go for the favelas, looking to really shut us all up. Could potentially be that sleeping bear that has now been awoken on Skyscraper. Uh, in general, just in terms of regular standings, it is like Aqualix, Rowdy TV, and Aerial Arise that are realistically fighting for third to fourth. And then it seems like for Luminosity and for also One Shot that they are well over 40 points and are 
more or less bouting for that first and second spot as of right now. But of course, anything can change the further we progress in through stage three. But yeah, on paper, this looked to have been a pretty good position as a whole for Oclux when they were ended up to go here on Skyscraper, but really just not able to counteract these very direct attacks by Favelas has put them in a really rough spot to the point where they felt it necessary to go in on that timeout. And if Favelas really need extra breathing room, they can end up just countering out with the timeout of themselves. So really, this position for AQ does not look all too good all of a sudden. Yeah, because like you said, I mean, like, right? They're, they're, it's, it's the Aerial Arise reality TV Oculus fight for third and fourth. I just want to, I just want to, Really hammer that point home to everyone. Now, right now, first through fifth, LG have 47 points, one shot have 44. So there's not, not a very high chance that they won't make it. They're probably mm -hmm. locked in. But Reality TV, Oculus, and Aerial Arise, right? They'll have to completely crap the bed this stage to, to drop a place to Investigation File, who's currently seven points behind fifth place. But Reality TV is at 39, Oculix is 38, Aerial Arise, just out of playoffs contention in fifth, is at 36. So it's not just about this stage. Oculix and Reality TV cannot afford to lose any points, lest Aerial Arise catch up. Wells, once again, seems like they want to not really overcomplicate their attacks once again. Oh, here's what? the run up oh my by God. Hat. Was there I not a play more Arrow, for that? I can't believe Arrow had time to get off his cam. I'm not too. Oh, well, there's, there's a claymore. claymore that we were just talking about. I guess there wasn't one for the hop out or Arrow or a hat. I mean, had just shot it. Still though, Thatcher's gone and now no one's playing on that karaoke repel, which again, that was a really important spot of the map to have for Favelas in those final 20 seconds. I think someone just now is getting ready to rotate over to that part of the map, but still a major kill to find for Aqua, especially the Thatcher ones again. Yeah, uh, with a mute on the board, that could be a very important pick, for, uh, especially for the defense to try and lock down those walls. Uh, there is still a Twitch from Rudy. He's gonna be looking for that jammer. Actually, it'll just be a shot from Bio to find it. Slothy, a nade kill onto Afer, and that was the Geisha man. Remember, he was able to evade those nades last time, but this time he falls, barring on a Psychosis, the flank from Rudy unseen, barring with two, and the Favelas completely shut the round out. And altogether, just keeping their composure, and also uh, one little minor thing as well, playing off their info as well, I did mention earlier that timing can be a really big thing to mess up, especially if you're not scrimming all too often, but Favelas, when they go in, gather information, they play off of that info almost instantaneously and synchronized as well. Everyone just floods the bomb site from several different angles. And again, with Favelas still having that slight advantage, it just gives them even more of a benefit to just dogpile an off and they are still playing for those light extensions and still not fully prepared. They're not, again, they're not reacting fast enough to shut, uh, to shut down or shut out any of these pretty much straightforward executes that favelas continue to bring out on these attacks. It's the same problem that we saw in Clubhouse, but Aqualix not even able to recover just yet. Now they've got to go three rounds in a row perfectly. And I want to touch back on the point of Favelas still have a timeout. So if they really find it necessary in these next three rounds to take one, they definitely could do so. Ten seconds left before insertion. This is rough for Oculix. Yeah. We we all thought this was gonna be a you know, probably a destruction considering the Favelas offseason roster moves, Oculix getting penguin, you know, going back to especially skyscraper as the map, but the Favelas have been dominating and proving that this is a really attacker sided map. I think Oculix going three and three really hurt them heading into this uh, second half because we know skyscraper is uh, tends to be an attacker haven and Favelas haven't lost an attack yet. Might try to go flawless here in the second half as well as once again I favelas more round to do so yeah they are not changing anything up and of course Oculix had a cursed our, our our perfect sight by not winning it back in round seven now opting to go for it once again here on round 10 that being barbecue and kitchen and favelas not really playing all too heavy to deny this extension they're once again trying to poke and prod near geisha but again that's just to allow the rest of that delivery clear to be a bit easier as a whole. Funny enough, the hatch isn't even open for the defense to use. It's fully reinforced. So if Favelas wanted to, they could probably clear up Geisha just even less than what you would probably expect. And that might be the main idea is once again, there is only one player up above currently and that's just Era, so he can get those back Geisha walls opened mm. up as the Havana. Yeah, I think Aqualix again, betting on the Favelas clearing upstairs, but they didn't last time and it worked. So, why would they hear? 
someone already inside. Bio jumping into lounge. I didn't even know he was there. Finds Hat chasing a drone. Slothy pushed up by delivery, almost gets the head of Beastly, but again, an opening pick for the Favelas, and we know how good their conversion rate has been. Now you've got Favelas, I can mention, great opening kill, and they haven't been able to let down the man advantage for the most part. Their trades have been pretty spot on for the most part, barring maybe playing into the fact that Aquax are no longer expecting this top floor clear. He might be able to make some magic work if everyone just focuses their attention onto this Geisha clear. This could be huge for barring. Rudy. It's a big kill on Psychosis. He's in! He's in lounge! Almost catches Aphra up the stairs, but instead it's Aphra to kill Arrow despite the low HP. Barring walks right in, but not in time. Aphra gets back. Still a one-man advantage for Favelas, though. Positionally great as well, but Penguin trying to strike back. Lands the headshot on Bio, takes the lounge pressure off of his team. Now it's mainly that upstairs presence from the Favelas. Slothy now on the repel, I believe that is. Someone now on the main stairs. It looks like Afer hears them. No, sorry, Slothy's still by delivery, so that's got to be Rudy on that rappel. Barring starts to descend the staircase, catches Afer looking the wrong way, but traded by Penguin. Still a two versus two. Aquilix have made sure this round doesn't get out of hand, but what is Beastly doing? Trying to take the fight against the player in delivery. He dies, and Penguin's in a one versus two. Plank going down from Rudy. He'll punch open the wall to try and distract the sledge, but loses the fight. Slothy wins, and the favelas upset. Aqualix, seven to three. An outcome we did not expect, but one we are more than willing to welcome here as Favelas quite literally played perfectly on their second half, winning every single round and keeping it fairly equal as well in the first half. They definitely deserve this win today against Aqualix. And again, just they didn't overcomplicate anything throughout that entire process. They kept things very simplistic. They kept things very basic, not really having to focus too much on those extensions. And funny enough, it felt like they were forcing Oclix a lot of times to actually make that first move. Even when they were on the defense, they had to give up a lot of those power spots to directly challenge Favelas when they were going for more awkward and off-angle positions. And it credited Favelas with a lot of success on their offense. So I, I gotta just say, great work, Favelas. You gotta keep that up. Yeah, and something I was a little worried about... Um was that whole right that point connor made about that defensive entry conversion rate but as the game started to progress it looked like favelas didn't even need it they were still trading rounds hmm. back and forth with aqualix even if they didn't get that opening pick but then flipping on to attack once they got onto attack out of the four rounds i mean they were three for four on entry and didn't drop a single one so great job of favelas really stepping up their entry game aqualix falling back on some of the mistakes we saw from last week and it really hurt them but that's it for match number one that's it for us john at least again for this game for we're now. gonna go back to the desk so they can digest this upset it could not be understated what a huge win this was for favelas but we'll start with the criticism criticisms first tanner we'll talk about aquilix one of the things that we often discuss or, or at least i've heard you preach a million times is you cannot lose the same site three times in a row. And that's exactly what Aquilix did with T. I mean, it's a site that they kept going back to and they didn't really innovate or change anything all that much. And when you lose a site and you're going back to it back to back, you're just giving the opponents who are trying to solve the puzzle of your strat the exact same puzzle the second time. Well, lo and behold, it's easier the second time around when you have to go and do it, even easier when it comes down to the third time. And one of the things I, I kind of noted here on the side of Oculus when I was going through this whole process was their defensive strats were not that deep. They weren't all that complicated. They were very simple, very basic, as if they were still trying to play that LMG meta that we just saw last stage with all the grenades. And Bios team were just able to piecemeal it one at a time, get pick after pick after pick after pick, and just shut down any attempts from Oculus to have a stable defensive half. And I think a lot of that has to come down to the very, like, weak utility and strategies that uh Oculus was employing i, I really hope that has to do with work i really hope that has to do with work oh yeah i'm sorry i was i was checking my schedule because it says it's saturday but i still think we're back on friday it seems like it's a little bit freaky the roles are reversed all of a sudden favelas look so incredibly clean and for tanner he was saying that hey Aquilix, their defensive setups they were a little bit simplistic and guess what we have a simple setup good quality IGL like bio is just gonna pick it apart mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. 
Well, Connor, that was the thing is, I mean, this is the first time we're getting to see uh, see this team in action. Do you, do you think it's bio? I mean, I don't want to, obviously the stats are insane on the other players on the team as well, but like, is he the difference here? You know, we can say it's the presence of Biologic or the absence of Jolt Naka. Either <laughs> one. They're both You're still going to find a way to beat up on him. You I said will you still will. find a way. I will he still find a way. But even if you look towards the bottom of that scoreboard, the barrings and the arrow, last stage, they didn't have that great of a stage. But those skills that they had, they were incredibly impactful. Those were two players that had a 2v5 together on a very critical defensive round they brought forth a lot of momentum for the favelas that they ultimately rode through onto their attacking half overall for aqualix there really wasn't a whole lot to write home about the first couple of rounds they looked good they looked like they were just going to let their guns do the talking and favelas they didn't have anything in that gunfight but as soon as stuff started getting a little bit more complicated favelas looked good they stepped into the game their own they looked more adaptive they looked more mm. fluid and they looked better so, uh, you know, the one thing to note here that I wanted to say just before going into this was I feel like Bio being over on that other side, I just, I interview him all the time. Last stage, it was like every week, it was, I was interviewing Bio. Mm -hmm. And I thought, you know what? I feel like I'm going to be interviewing Bio again today. And that's exactly what's going to happen right now. Bio back again we all i'll be the first to admit we discounted this team but you guys came back in and it was going well what what were you guys feeling because this this is a different team than we saw stage two uh yeah i mean it's a different team for both of us um yeah, yeah. obviously a lot of roster changes the team because of mirage you know they don't know what they're mm -hmm. doing um but yeah i mean it, uh i don't know why people like discredit like the guys on the team are good like rudy bar and mm -hmm. even like arrow they're all like good players in cl they just got kind of unlucky uh i told rudy and bar not to leave last stage well they left so they got unlucky for them arrow was a top player on i forget the team i think inve investigation file yeah. so yeah we're all good players but it's we just i guess you just have to it's all about like working together did, did you think that your first victory would come up against a team like Aqualix who's sitting atop the standings? Was that where you thought it was going to happen? Um, I kind of, like, even though they switched out Gash for Penguin, um, the team is still the same. I I know from, I, I know from, like, watching Penguin what maps he likes, even though I've never, like, played him. So mm -hmm. I, we banned, like, the maps that they like. Um, they want to mm -hmm. go to Sky. They don't really know this, but like we have some Astralis disciples on this team, and Astralis is nasty on Sky. And all we did mm -hmm. was scrim them on both of our teams, so we know how to play Sky on attack. Defense is just a coin flip. I mean, they really don't know how to play the map. Like you guys saw, they went barbecue <laughs> kitchen and they reinforced the hatch. I guess they reinforced the hatch because they assume that people take over, but you don't need to do that on Sky. You can just mm. like work site, work picks. So yeah. Well, either way, this is a huge win for you guys, and I'm excited to see what comes Wait, to the rest of the stage. One question: What team did P Cookies pick? Uh, we all picked Aqualix. Every uh, single person. All right. <laughs> yeah. I still, I still love Cookies, even though you know, he's still <laughs> playing on my downfall. We'll, we'll let him know. We'll let him know. All right. Thanks, Bio. All right. Have a good day. Okay. Just before we flip to break, Tanner, I know you were. We had to get that interview done. I know you were dying to tell me something. What was it? Well, I just wanted to say big shout out to Slothy, who had an absolute standout yeah. performance today. He's mm -hmm. one of those players that, you know, throughout stage two and stage one, he didn't really have these big showings. He's had a lot of players who, you know, kind of stood off uh, and, and performed for him. You got, you know, Doc or whether that's Papa P. But this game was one of those first games where I looked at Sloth and I went, wow, yeah. what a performance that he had today. And I think we just needed to give him a little bit. And let's not forget, we we were one kill away from raving about a 1v5 comeback on his that unfortunately mm. fell short in the 1v4. It was, it was beastly, correct? That ended up uh, yes. Yes. stopping that run, but man, that was close. Okay, one match down. Throw out what I said about, you know, this stage being predictable so far. I feel like I based my whole intro off of that, and I'm, I'm wrong. Out of the gate. We're going to go to a quick break. When we come back, it's XL, XLSR, whatever you want to call them. Taking on Vipers. We'll be back in a few minutes, everyone.